We are joined by Alamogordo Tigers head football coach AJ Cisco coming off uh, a impressive win over Gaston. Coach, how are you? I'm good, man. It's homecoming week. It is homecoming week. Uh, Capital coming into town from Santa Fe. Different opponent. I'm not. I'm sure Alamogordo at some point has played Capital in football, but I'm not. I don't know if that ever has ever yeah. happened because they. I think they got built in the '80s or yeah. um, late '80s, early '90s, somewhere on there. So I mean, it's definitely a different different opponent. We've seen them in basketball a little bit, but uh, not in football. So that's kind of cool. But we'll look back at last week's game, and you know, it was um, you thought it was deja vu after that first series for a second. <laughs> I then, was I was not a happy camper. <laughs> well, the defense clamped down and played like they were, they were capable of the rest of the game. That's impressive because I mean that certainly could have gotten the kids down a little bit from the standpoint of oh my goodness, what's going on. But they were excellent, I thought, the majority of the game. No, and we spent the whole time that week talking about how do we handle that situation going into uh, facilities, locker rooms, the turf, the the mosquitoes. Uh, some, that, that kid's good enough that he was going to break one at some point. We all understood that. We hoped it wouldn't happen, but we dang sure didn't want it to happen on the third play. But we responded, and our, our credit, credit to our defensive staff, our defense kids, uh, playing well. Um, I think we still got to get better tackling-wise. But uh, that was impressive to watch us come back and keep playing after that. And then offensively, I thought the team, uh, you know, played played really well, and uh, you guys were able to move the ball up and down the field. Obviously, I mean, getting some points and turnovers off defense helped, but uh, you know, you don't put up fifty four without the offense doing what. Uh, yeah, no, we and I was uh, I was pleased with our tempo. Um, our kids were pretty. Fr- our kids kept saying that the officials keep slowing us down, coach. So that was a good part is our tempo. I thought we executed pretty well um, in the things they tried to do. We still got to get better about running the correct routes. Um, we, we're screwing that up still, but it, it's first time we're doing it, first year doing it, so it's still learning curves with that. Um, but Elijah did a good job trying to take care of the football. I think he made one real bad mistake um, that he'll learn from. But our tempo was good. We forced him to burn some timeouts. Um, we got them in some uncomfortable situations. I thought we ran the ball well. Um, and even then, we got some short fields. Uh, we ran, ended up running, I think, 57 plays. So, and with the running clock, that's, that's okay for us, uh, including the short fields. We're looking for about 65 to 70. Yeah, I was going to say, I think if you had long – I mean, you don't want long fields. If your defense is playing well and you're getting the ball, uh, you know, especially after two- or three-yard punts on a couple occasions there, you can uh, – you can. No, and you, yeah, yeah, no, you feel good. And then, I mean, you go to that opening drive right after they scored, we had a 14-play drive yeah. to go down and score. Now, that 14-play drive, I was telling somebody in the past couple of years, would have taken the entire quarter, um, and it took us just a little over three minutes. So I was pleased with that. Um, we still got to get better in execution-wise. Uh, I thought we did a better job of not having dumb penalties of, of killing ourselves. But all in all, I mean, Gatson's Gatson's got a couple of kids that can scare you, and Coach Fosio does a good job. And I was just pleased with how our kids came out in that environment and played. Something else, you know, I didn't mention this last week, but I want to mention this week because he had two more field goals, and of course he had that fifty-three yarder last week. Uh, you know, what a nice you know ace in the hole to have with Braden Money because I mean he's really kicking the ball well. For it is, and year. that's and like I said, you know, ever since we had his brother, and even with him. Having a kicker in a high school is a is a huge advantage, and um, so it's always good that when we get in a situation and we stall out, and it's a fourth and six or fourth and eight, we're comfortable kicking, getting three points and moving on, and and going back and playing good defense and trying to get another drive going. So it is that is a luxury to have, um, especially when we get a little bit of breeze behind our back or there's no breeze at all, then we know we're going to get touchbacks out of him and kick in the end zone, and we're going to start on the twenty. Yeah, absolutely. Don't have to worry about uh, uh, return coverage at all. That definitely makes it a little bit better. So. Um, you head into homecoming week. Homecoming week is always, it's it's fun. It also can be challenging. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on around that. But um, it seems like the team has certainly set up a very business like attitude for everything they've done so far this year. So I'm sure even with some extra stuff in there, they're ready to go for this week. Absolutely. Um, that's and that's one of the things we want our kids to enjoy homecoming. Um, it happens once a year. It doesn't happen in any other sport. It's during football season. Uh, we want them to be involved in the activities, go to the events, do the things around campus. Um, but we tell them from the start that homecoming doesn't get played if there's no football game. Like it doesn't happen. There's the most important thing is still seven o'clock on Friday night. And our kids, because we're so senior laden and, and we got good leaders at the top, they understand that there's a mindset and we're, it's all business at a certain point. And I mean, there's some things that are going on. I don't think we've had a bonfire for a couple of years now because of, you know. Oh, it's all new. None of these kids know how to do yeah. any of this stuff. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> had our first pep assembly last week for the first time in three years. So yeah. it's everything's a growing curve for everybody in that school. Yeah, for sure. Uh, parade, which uh, again I think hasn't happened in a couple of years as well. So we're excited to see a lot of that stuff come back. Uh, parades at three o'clock on Friday. Thursday is the bonfire at seven o'clock, which is right there on Tiger Drive. And, uh, of course, the football game we know is uh, 7 o'clock on Friday night as well. Um, meanwhile, you bring in a, a Capital Jaguars team, which, um, you know, they've uh, they've played, you know, lost to a, a pretty good St. Mike's team, even though that's a couple classifications lower than them. It's private school, and St. Mike's is the best team in that city. Yeah, that's a big rivalry, too. That's, that's been that way for a long time. Yeah, so and it, it was a close game. 
uh, beat Grants, beat Los Alamos, which Los Alamos has been a solid program in recent years as well. Uh, what's your assessment of overall this Capital team? Uh, it's in? a good football team. Coach Garcia has done a good job. They've completely changed who they were um, under Coach Moon um, before Coach Garcia took the job last year. Um, they're all air raid. They're spread it out. And they're in zero personnel or ten personnel the entire time. But and they throw around. They got good skill kids. I mean, they got skill kids like scary quarterbacks, a stud. Um, they got a tailback that's faster than heck. Um, number one also plays safety for them. They got good skill kids across the board. Defensively, they got a nose guard that that gets after it, and their D line's pretty dang good. And they let them cause havoc. And then they got a linebacker, uh, number twenty one, who's who's one of the better ones we've seen all year. So I guess the the question obviously is now with them having that spread offense and trying to throw the ball a lot. You know, one of the I would say the things from your defense that has been concerning this year is guys getting behind the secondary a little bit. Uh, what's what's been the talk to the defense uh, going into this? Just game? playing what we know how to do. I mean, a lot of times that's our kids try to do something extra. And then we end up blowing a coverage. I mean, we did it last week when we put a, a – not a younger guy in there. We put another senior in to try to get some quality reps late in the game. We blew a coverage and gassing out a shot for a touchdown late in the game. Um, that's just the growing up part. Um, we got to understand that we can't do anything special or extra than what we're supposed to do and, and trust that everybody else is going to get their job done and we'll match up and be okay. And – Offensively, you guys feel that you can do what you expect to do and uh, and keep the uh, the momentum going with what the offense has been doing. You you hope that and you go in every week. Uh, it's kind of uncertain based on tempo of what we're going to get. They get into about four different fronts defensively, um, so we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know what tempo is going to do to them. Um, so that's always kind of the guessing game each week is how do how do they handle the tempo if we can really push it on them. Um, and if we don't push it on them, then they kind of get to pin their ears back and come get us. So uh, we're not going to change who we are. We're still going to run the ball first. I, I think we ran 57 plays last week, and 30-something of them were run plays. I mean, that's who we are. Um, and we will take shots down the field. I mean, you've seen that in the first three weeks. We're going to throw the ball deep. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the run game got actually a little bit more. There were more holes and more opportunities for for the running backs. And, and I think what's what I think is fun to watch as well is, you know, you guys, it's a different running back every series, it seems like. You have a number of guys that can really carry the ball. Yeah. And they get well. spaced out, and you just go down line. And you tell the kid, "Hey, it's your series next." And they're going until they pop a big one. When they pop a big one, then they're getting out. We got another one sprinting in, and and that's the cool is you have that luxury. I was telling them, our running back coach, Coach Cisco, the other day. That's the luxury a lot of places don't have, where we can throw four or five kids in there that are going to give us quality reps. Um, go, some of them will go get us tough yards. Some are a little bit more loose if it can pop a big one. And you mentioned, I think Elijah's gained a little bit more confidence throwing the football than he, you know, he his. <laughs> He's got kind of a sidearm delivery. He kind of, uh, you know, he, he can does a pretty good job when he's on the move. I think that especially helps you guys that, that he has the mobility that he'll have the option to run or throw, and they know that he can hurt them either. Yeah, way. Yeah, right? and he and he's a tough nosed kid, and and that's when we talk about him throwing the ball down the field. That it's not just him. If we get an incomplete pass, there's, I mean, half the time our receivers aren't running the correct uh, route with it as we go. So it goes back to that learning curve of learning this whole new offense. But we're going to take shots. We're going to be try to be aggressive and um, try to be explosive. And every now and then when we hit a big one, you see how fast we can get it going and we'll snap it before the chains are even set yeah as long, again as long as the officials are slowing you down yeah. a little bit i know i was like those those guys gotta gotta, gotta catch up a little bit there but uh i'm sure that they're gonna do their best as well to make that uh, work for you all right well, we'll see what happens uh, again these next two weeks uh two more home games before the bye week in the district it's oh go ahead i got one more thing um the young man at oregon mountain mm -hmm. um abraham romero um who was hurt and is in a um in the children's hospital in el paso um, this Friday, um, during the second quarter, we're going to have a, on behalf of the Tiger Touchdown Club, which is the Bush Club for the football team, uh, we're going to have our freshman football players out there with the coaches walking up and down the bleachers asking for donations. Um, everything that is donated is going straight to Abe's family to help with medical expenses throughout that. So um, we want people to come to the game. It's homecoming. Get excited. Um, bring some money to, so we can help out. And that donation will be made on behalf of the community of Alamogordo, not on the Tiger football. So we're going to do this based on um, everybody in the community um, and try to help that young man out. Um, and his family out with uh, going forward and keep praying for that young man. Yeah, and I know there's, I, I think, almost every football program in the southern part of the state I've seen uh, similar things go on for the, that. So I think that's awesome that the football community here in southern New Mexico has really uh, stepped around that young man. To, uh, yeah, no, it's and it's and it, that's a serious deal, and it's the last thing you ever want to see happen to a young man. And uh, but we're going to be there for and as our part of the community of Almagordo and do what we can. All right, we'll look forward to. Uh, that coming up on Friday, and uh, hopefully we get a lot of people that uh, that donate to that, and uh, look forward to hopefully what's going to be a, a fun football game on Friday night uh, between the Tigers and the Jaguars. Coach, good luck this week. I appreciate it, man. Go Tigers. Thanks.